Hello everybody, it's Undead Viking. How's everybody doing out there in uh, board game land? Awesome. Well, uh, today I'm here uh, going to do another review for you. And like some of the reviews I've been doing recently, seems like I've had a lot of these actually fairly recently, right in a row. It's another Kickstarter video. Uh, Kickstarter, if, uh, well, I'm pretty sure most of you know what Kickstarter is. But Kickstarter is a program that's located online that allows people to present a product and they allow people to invest in said product and once a certain level of funding of investment is reached then the product itself is then created and produced and those people who got in uh, on the uh, Kickstarter program will get a copy of whatever product is being released and by copy I'm talking about board games and by board games I'm talking about ground floor today. Ground floor is funded successfully. So if you're thinking about, uh, oh, well, if I put my money, am I, is it going to be able to make it? Yeah, this one's going to make it. They've totally overfunded and actually they're pushing towards uh, a stretch goal. Uh, and hopefully if they can get to a certain level of funding, uh, they're going to actually, not only will you get a copy of Ground Floor, but you'll get a copy of an, a totally another new game that they're making called Skyline. But this isn't about Skyline, so that's all I'm going to say about that. But what I'm going to talk about today is Ground Floor. And ground Floor is an economic kind of worker placement, more like a um, uh, worker pawn placement or worker... Uh, I'll explain. When, you, when I explain the rules, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, it's an economics game, though. And the theme of the game is that you are the CEO of a company uh, producing some sort of item. It's up to you to decide. It really doesn't matter. That's the only part of the theme that really doesn't have a definition. You, you could be uh, making... Uh, you know, pet appliances, or uh, Cogswell Cogs and Spacely Sprockets, for those of you who follow the Judgments. Anyway, every one of uh, you and every one of the players, you are all making competing products, and you're all trying to make some cash in today's economy. And you're going to be uh, hiring employees, you're going to be doing marketing, you're going to have meetings, you're going to have uh, develop things. I mean, it, like I said, when I explain the game, you'll understand further what happens. Uh, as I said, it is an economics game because it, ultimately, yes, it is going to be a victory point type game where um, you're, you're, whoever gets the most points wins the game. It isn't going to be whoever has the most money. But you definitely do need money to be able to get points. So uh, the game is about making an engine, a resource allocation money making engine. And I tend to like these types of games. So uh, when they asked me if I wanted to do a review and they offered to have a prototype sent to me, um, they said, could you please take a look at it? And I said, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll throw it at my uh, my gaming group and we'll play it a few times. And, and then I will uh, let the board game world know what I think. So I do apologize if you happen to find this video after the Kickstarter program is over, but you the game will come out, and, and it isn't just for people that invest. Uh, once the game is produced and, and, and does come out, you will be able to get your own copies, obviously, because they'll be able to be purchased at online stores and at gaming stores and so on and so forth. But I kind of rambled on here a little bit. Uh, that's enough for the introduction. Let's go ahead and show you how you play uh, Ground Floor. Okay, this is the board for ground floor. And as always, repeat after me, this is a prototype, so no guarantee that this is going to be uh, the way the game looks when it actually does get published. However, um, as you can see here, there's uh, many different businesses uh, that you'll be using uh, for your startup company to, uh, to uh, enable your company to do better. And there is a round marker up here as the game progresses. The round marker actually tells you, uh, at the very beginning of the game, you can only use level 1 improvements and purchase level 1 improvements for your company. After you get to round 4, there's actually, and it's tough to see and I do apologize for that, but you can it shows that you can do uh, level 2 improvements. And once you get to round 7, you can start using level 3 improvements. Uh, this is the job market. This tracks... Uh, how many employees basically are out there and how much they cost in order for you to hire them. Uh, as you hire people, um, you'll move this marker uh, this way on the track. And it starts off, it costs you, there's, there's basically two main types of resources that are used to purchase things in Ground Floor, and that's money and uh, time, or information. I shouldn't say time, I apologize. Time is actually used as well, but um, money and information is used to purchase things. So it takes five money and five information 
right now at the beginning of the game to uh, hire an employee. And then if you hired an employee, you'd move over to the right. And then if somebody else decided to hire somebody, you'd look and, oh, it's still 5'5", five, five. I'm going to hire somebody. You move it to the right. And then, and so on and so forth. Now it's 6 and 6, however. So, you know, it's going to be more expensive, obviously. Um, as the game progresses, you'll go through different phases of the economy uh, from like depressions and booms and and uh, where it's stable but that's going to cause unemployment and when unemployment happens you'll you'll shift this back and it'll move slowly to the left because there's more people out in the job market it's going to be cheaper to hire people so it goes down to four and three and all the way over here in the end it costs two of each two money and two info to hire somebody all the way over on the left Popularity track is uh, determined uh, by marketing. You're marketing your particular product. Uh, you're becoming more popular. Your, po your product becomes more viable, if you will. And this also determines who gets to go first. And going first in this game is very important, as with a lot of games. You know, if you're the first person to pick, first person to uh, be able to choose what you want, you're also able to uh, make some, in some situations make the last choice so you can watch what everybody else does. That sort of thing is very important. At the beginning, you randomize it. I just shook up these three discs, and I had them end up like this. So it looks like purple, yellow, and green. If you're all in the same spot, the person on top goes first. So that's how that goes. Now, as the game progresses and people uh, market their item, market their company, and it gets popular, this will change. And so later on, you might have a situation that looks like this. So yellow is furthest to the right. They'll go first. Green is on top of purple in that location, so they'll go second, and purple, once again, will go last. That's how the popularity track works. I do like that. I think it's pretty cool. I will point out this is the economic forecast deck. Um, you can see they're stable and other all these different uh, possibilities, and I will show these in further detail in a little bit when we get to that section. But I will point out that there's actually... Um, you only use half of the cards that, that you get. And I do like that because um, you, even though you know that there will be, you know, three stable, uh, you know, and and three recessions and two booms and two depressions when you when you play the game, there is uh, one no guarantee when those will occur. But also you don't know which one because on the back it's different. So just because you've seen one stable economy, each stable economy won't be exactly the same, and so on and so forth. As I said, these are the different locations, and I'll explain those in just a quick moment. However, I'm going to show you the player board. These are kind of cool. Everybody gets one of these. This is the blueprint, if you will, the ground floor of your company. Um, you might be wondering what this little cookie bite is up here, and I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, I will point out that this is your little CEO marker, and your CEO marker starts off here on the board showing that you have one employee, the CEO. And as you hire more people, you'll move up this track. Now, you, this, the reason you have this is because for each spot you can control, you get a certain number of time units, which are these discs here. And you can see in the first spot, it's just the CEO, and he gives you four. When you have an, another employee, he gives you another three, so you'd have a total of seven. Another employee, give you a total of ten, and so on and so forth, until you get to the top and you'd have 16 of these. However, you do have to pay your employees. Ah, oh, cursed wages. Anyway, but in the beginning, you can see it's just you, so you're making nine money. But when you're here at six, three, you're breaking even, and then you're at minus three. So you have to kind of gauge, you know, it's like, I need the time, but I better be making money somewhere else by creating and selling product, which I'm going to explain in just a second here. So after the game starts, uh, you will, you'll, if, if people want to hire somebody, they will, and then they will hire those people. It should be noted that you do not, even though you might move up and you know, hire somebody, you'll get these three discs. Those aren't going to be valid until the next turn, the turn after you've hired the employee. So it's kind of like you're hiring them and you're training them, and next turn you will have access to that. So uh, you will notice that I, I mentioned that cookie cutter thing. Um, at the beginning of the game, uh, there are these tiles here, and you'll hand these out randomly, or maybe you'll pick them, however you want to do that. I do it randomly. And you'll notice that they, this fits right there. That makes the top of your building. And so this particular uh, bonus for this particular company that this person's playing, it's a non-profit, meaning it is a training specialty. Now, what does that mean? It means that I take this little tile here, it says training on it, and I get to freebie place the training there. Normally it would take two time discs to train one employee here, but when I place that 
on that location. It's one time disk. And so, and you can actually remodel your company and you can slowly improve those spaces. Just because you start off with that, just that doesn't mean you aren't eventually going to possibly be able to improve it as well. So, that's what the player board is. And it's kind of cool actually because, and I'll show you this in a moment, but later on, you'll add more floors to your business. So like, if you added this floor to your business and, and then that goes on top like that and you can see that you're gonna eventually have a skyscraper like that. And it's, it's actually, I really, I really dig that. I, I like that a lot. So, but anyway, so after all that is done, you've collected your disc, you're going to start the game up as you would expect. It's kind of like a worker placement game, but actually you're just spending time on the board and you'll be spending your discs that you've collected. Now, if you decide to play a disc on your board here and you're keeping it in house, if you will, these actions are, are taken care of immediately. Meaning that if you wanted to assemble, and you, you spent three discs here, assembly allows you to create a product. Now remember, the product is completely vague. You know, everybody can decide at the beginning of the game uh, what product you're doing. Like uh, one game we decided that we were making fake uh, funny nose and glasses. And it was funny nose and glasses companies fighting each other. But uh, it could be computer parts, video games, tennis shoes, uh, you know, uh, rifles, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, and so you'd create, so you could spend that, and you'd create a cube. If you create these cubes, it should be noted that you have to have a place to put them. So you better make sure you have a storage closet. You see that? It's a spot for that cube. It sits there. Cool, huh? All right. Well, anyway. So uh, if you decide to use that, like I said, you process those immediately. However, if you decide to outsource your, your abilities and go out here uh, to use the big businesses, um, this costs more time and money, but you do, in general, get better results. Uh, from using them. Now, I should mention that for the most part, uh, these abilities are replicated here on your board. But like I said, if you decide to go out here and use them, uh, you you will get as long as you have the time and the money and and the and the uh, information resource, uh, you can you know, take advantage of these locations. And I'm going to explain those to you in fairly quick order. Um, consulting firm over here. Uh, consulting firm is actually pretty cool. Uh, you have to fill this out one through six and you go ahead and like you would place your tokens and you have to pay money to take if you place tokens. So it starts off with six money, then five and four. Now, if you place that, you don't get anything the first turn. The next turn, however, these slide over after the turn is done. And on the second turn, now people if they want to do the consulting firm, they once again have to start at the top. So let's say purple wants to be a cons con do consulting, and then uh, yellow decides that they want to do consulting again, just to make sure that somebody's backing that up, and I'll explain that in just a moment. And finally, nobody else uses that. So at the end of the turn, you get 10 information resource, as long as there's a cube that basically pushes you off the edge. Like so. So purple will get 10. Or green will get 10, I'm sorry. Yellow will get 10. But nobody's here to push purple off. So purple just falls off. And they don't get any return from their investment as far as, uh, you know, with the consulting. They wouldn't get that 10 information. I think that's kind of cool. Like, if, if you have something way down here, yeah, it doesn't cost a lot. Because when you get down to the bottom, it only costs you 3 as opposed to 6. But you're gambling that somebody's going to actually build it out and actually you know, uh, put a put a disc there to push you off. Now, of course, like Yellow did, you could do it yourself, but, you know, that costs money, obviously. You're hoping somebody else does it so you don't have to invest a ton of uh, your own cash into getting your information resource. All right. The advertising agency, that's where how you market your particular, uh, your, partic your particular product, if you will, if we're making laser guns or whatever. As you place your tokens in these locations, uh, you... Now get to decide, after it's all said and done, after the, you know, we're, we're, we're processing the, the board here, starting at the bottom, these people decide what they're going to put their particular token in. Now broadcast, obviously, that's that's radio, that's TV. You're getting a really good return on your marketing. Print, well, that's a magazine's newspaper, obviously. Less return. And networking, well, you know, you know what, if you work in the corporate world, you know what networking means. Networking doesn't give you a lot of return, but it doesn't cost you any money. This actually, to do broadcast, to move your guy over to the spot, it costs you two money and two information to do that. If you decide to do print, it costs you one of each, 
And networking actually doesn't cost you anything, and you can take another one of your uh, time units from your, your from the general supply, and you can throw it in there with it. Now, why you do that? Well, when it comes time, let's uh, let's just say we did that and that and so on and so forth. When it comes time to uh, process this, like okay, purple used that, um, they gained uh, you know plus one uh, popularity, uh, so that they would move up one like so on the on the marketing track. Um, and since they're the only one there, they actually get another bonus because of the fact that they are the only person broadcasting it presently. And so in here, you know, in print, you know, there's it actually costs you two particular uh, discs to actually have print do anything for you. Well, neither of these people have two, so nothing happens, but they will stay in there. This one will actually go, though. And the same thing with networking. It takes you three for it actually to actually process and do anything for you, so those will sit there again. Now, when the next turn comes, if, say, yellow goes here, and, you know, green, you know, it does that. Now, the next turn comes and ends, green will move one there, green moves one there, and, you know, yellow moves there. And so you can see now, finally, because yellow will then place an extra one in there because of the fact that they placed one in there, and so on and so forth. Networking, they can, they can, they'll be able to turn in those three for one, they'll be able to turn in these three for one, but they'd leave those, and green would turn in those two for one as well. So you can see, just, but you would leave, you leave those in there as time goes by. Now you get to the marketing bonus. Now, depending on where it ends, as far as the turn goes, whoever is the most popular company gets to pick one of these bonuses. They can remodel, supply, you know, get some money, some info, get a temp worker, things like that. This, Everybody gets to do that except for the person that is the least popular. If you're the least popular, you get nothing. You get no nothing from that track. So that kind of stinks, but you know, what do you do? So uh, you know, and this is actually one of those moments where it's actually really, really uh, fun to. Uh, I shouldn't say fun, but uh, to watch somebody curse their luck, if you will, or or be angry about the fact that they weren't able to to get uh, that particular. Uh, a, a bonus that they wanted because you you jam them uh, with with the advertising is always uh, very 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 fun and 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 I I guess I giggle at that I guess but maybe it's just because I'm a little bit cruel but anyway so um, warehouse if you uh, place uh, your little marker here you once again you have to fill it up as it goes by you just you get to pay either two money or one information in the first spot and it just gets you a cube that's pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, as it goes down the, to the track, it becomes more and more expensive in order to get that. You know, so like at the very beginning, it's two money or one information. At the bottom, it's five money or four information. So you can see where um, that's you know where it's going to end up being one of those situations where uh, you know you're gonna have to risk. Like, do you think that you're actually it's going to be worth it to take a cube for the amount that they're asking? Kind of situation. The factory is where you're going to be taking. Um, your cubes, your raw material, if you will, and you're going to be fashioning it or, and, and gussing it up and turning it into your, uh, your, your thing. And so you, if you will place these on, it costs you two money and two information and a cube in order to be able to uh, do that. So you immediately use up your cube and you're going to take that out of your, if you have that you know, stored in your place, so you take the cube and you get rid of it, but now you have this disc in, in the factory. And so what happens with the disc, let's just put a couple more in there real quick here, so we can have a representation of everybody. So now what's going to happen uh, with those particular discs? Okay, so when it comes to the retailers, oh, I screwed something up, actually. I apologize, 789, I can't count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, let's just do it like that. So now uh, when we're processing this the person that placed first green gets to the side it's going to be a stable economy where do they want to actually place you know their particular item for sale and so they're going to look and there's three brackets you know the top bracket you can you probably can't tell but there's a 16 so like if you were able to sell something in the top bracket it'd be worth 16 dollars and the second bracket it's 12 12 10 10 10 and the next bracket is 8 8 you know and so forth 6 6 6 6 6 and there's a liquidation is for three now what happens is, is that you have to kind of prognosticate, uh, one, where other people are going to be placing their cubes, and also, um, you know, where, you know, how many people are going to be purchasing uh, those items. So, what's, 
when, when people are buying things, how do people buy things? They want to buy things uh, from what's popular, what they think is good because of advertising, and what's cheapest. So, uh, green sides, well, I'm going to go ahead and put one on the second bracket for 10. Now, that may or may not be a wise decision, but we'll, we'll find out. So now purple goes, and purple says, you know, that's not a bad idea. I'm going to go and put one in 10 as well. Now, yellow gets to go. And yellow decides, looking that they're the least popular, they they just want, uh, you know, they want to make some money this turn. So they're going to go ahead and place one in the lowest bracket at eight. And now green goes again, follows suit, and purple goes again, and goes there. So we turn the first card over, and we see we're going to have a recession, first of all, in the future. But also we see stable. Now we have three players, and what this says is that there are with three players... There are two consumers and two unemployed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move this unemployment job market the other way. And only two people are going to purchase anything. So, and those two people that are going to purchase things are going to buy them in the lowest bracket for the lowest amount of money. So purple immediately is going to make six money for selling that one. And now green and yellow are both the same at eight. So, but green has a more popular uh, product. So green is going to sell this one at 8, and yellow, nobody's going to buy that one, unfortunately. After all is said and done, the products themselves shift down one bracket. Yellow will get li their item liquidated for 3 money for their trouble, and these will move down into the next bracket. And so, and then next turn, if they don't get sold, obviously, then they'll, they'll be uh, liquidated as well. It's important to know that if... We're, if at any given time, if all these spots are used up and you have a, a product moving over, it automatically just goes to be liquidated. Okay, well, hopefully after you've processed all of that and you've processed your player board, you've got some money and you've got some resources and you've got some uh, information that you're going to be able to use in the construction. Now, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, this particular location, it actually tells you, depending on the number of players, how many spots are available. And in this particular situation... Uh, with three people, you can have up to four spots available. So, if we just had two people use this particular spot, like so, you have the option of either building a another level, basically, uh, to your your domain. But you got to remember, like if you see up there in the corner, and that's gonna be kind of tough to see, but um, that is a a one level a particular uh, situation. And let me see if I can find a. Uh, higher level one. Um, here we go. So, the the corner office, and you can see that there's. That's yeah, tough to tell, and I do apologize. These are kind of tiny, but you got to make sure that you're only able to. You only can purchase uh, the the improvements that are actually available at that particular spot. So, if you can see, this is actually a level one. You can see that just that one little dot, and this is actually kind of a cool one. So, if you built this, it's an empty floor. Now you're like, oh, what, what, how, what, what good is an empty floor? Well, another thing that you can actually build is you can build what's called a, you know, uh, like these tiles, which are called the tenant improvements. And so, like, this is like a premium product. So whenever you uh, sell something, you actually earn more money. And so if you have these empty floors, you can go ahead and place, you know, that on that location. So you can have these, these, these improvements. Whereas... Unfortunately, if you wanted to build one of these and you didn't have one of those empty floors, you'd have to use up a space on here. Um, what and, and that's why on, on the back it has the, the, the color that would correspond with your blueprint here as well. And so then you know you would be able to you know build that. And then it's the floors themselves uh, cost to build another floor costs you two money and two information per existing level of your uh, of your building already. So the already you have a ground floor. So the very first time you build something, it's four and four. When you build another one, it's six and six, and eight and eight, and so on and so forth. The tenant improvements cost you one of each. So it's pretty uh, pretty standard. And uh, I, I did mention, I forgot, I mentioned, I mentioned remodeling a few times and adding those things. I should have mentioned, remodeling actually happens right away at the very beginning. If you decide you want to remodel uh, one of one of your existing spots, it costs you three money and three information in order to remodel one of these locations. But after all is said and done, like I said, you, you clean off the board, you, you figure out who goes first, and you start up the next turn. And um, yeah, that kind of went on a little bit longer than I wanted, but I hope I gave you a pretty good idea of how the game is played. 
Uh, as I said, you, you move the round marker, and, and slowly but surely, as, you, as the game progresses, um, bigger and better things are made available to you. The game ends when you reach the end of the turn markers, in which case then you determine how many points each person has. Uh, even though this game is an economic game, it's based on points. Uh, you get points for levels of the building, you gain points for remodeling, you gain points for certain uh, certain tenant improvements that you might have, uh, and so on and so forth to you know better your point total. You can either end that way, or it can also end when, if somebody actually manages to complete and build uh, the, the full skyscraper, the full six floors of the skyscraper. And then if you're able to do that, then you know the game ends on that turn if you do that prior uh, to the end of the game coming. But um, like I said, there you go. There, there's a ground floor. I hope you uh, got a real good idea of how to play the game. And uh, let me tell you exactly uh, what I think. All right, so ground floor, there you go. Um, I didn't go over every single little tiny rule. I do apologize for that. Uh, but I hope you do have a very good semblance of an idea of how you play the game. If you've played Euro games, and especially economic Euro games, I think that you'll be able to grasp this pretty well. But there are some cool little intricacies and cool different uh, changes. Now, uh, what I mean by, by saying changes, what I mean is, is that um, this isn't kind of like your standard Euro game, if you will. Um, it's, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, I got a new uh, economic Euro. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, what? What? I, I, I hate to sound like kind of, I, you know, for a lot of people who don't play a lot of games like this, you might be saying, well, this side, that actually looks really cool. And yeah, you know what? It does look really cool. But the thing is, is that I've been playing board games like this now for, you know, better part of half a decade. And a lot of times there's a lot of, you know, sameness when you're playing a game. It's like, put this figure here, collect these cubes, turn these cubes into this, place that figure there, turn those cubes that you turned into this into points, and then repeat, 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 and after 10 rounds, whoever did that the best wins. And, you know, while those games can be challenging, and there's a lot of games out there like that, it takes something special for me to actually go, wow, this is fun. And it kind of stinks, actually, if I have to be completely honest, because I kind of sit there and I say to myself, God, you know, I remember when I first got into the hobby and, like, the first time I played a game, you know, like Agricola, or the first time I ever played a game like Stone Age, or the first time I ever played a game, you know, uh, you know like Arkham Horror, which isn't a Euro game, but I'm just throwing that name. I was like, "Wow, this is so cool! I've never even heard of games like this." I, I, I you know, and and I, I, I doubt I can ever really reclaim that kind of excitement that I had. But every once in a while, I get a game, you know, and Ground Floor is one of them, where I do kind of get excited as I'm playing it, and you know, and instead of me saying like, "Wow, I'm really having fun." I find myself smiling as I'm playing the game, and that mean that made me seem silly. But like I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm planning on my turn, and I find myself just I really just start enjoying myself, you know, just like wow, this is kind of neat how all these things, you know, click together, you know. And and ground floor's got a lot going on, but it never feels like uh, what's I'm looking for. It never feels like I'm being overwhelmed, you know, by by by, by the the mechanics. I never feel like I'm like, well, what does this do again? How did that work? It, it's challenging, but, you know, it isn't exactly to the point where, you know, I'm referring to the rule book or I'm taking multiple minutes when my turn comes along. And what it also is going for it is it just kind of has some cool little things to it. I mean, like, you know, I showed you, but, like, the whole thing about, you know, like, the, the pieces of, like, you know, your, your, your floor is going on there and how, like, you build your, your skyscraper up, that's just cool to look at as, as you're playing the game. And it's just, and yeah, I mean, okay, they could have done anything with that. They could have had, just had little squares and stuff like that. But that's just kind of cool. You watch as your building grows and, 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 and as you expand and you, and you get bigger and more powerful. And, and, and the really cool thing about this is that a lot of times people say, oh, it's just a pasted-on theme. And as I said in the intro, this is a very thematic Euro. Um, I had a game earlier this year that was a very thematic Euro that I really, really dug, and that was Manhattan Project. And um, this, for me, 
really, really is that kind of game. I, I found myself smiling a lot, and I still find myself smiling a lot when I play Manhattan Project, and I find myself smiling a lot when I play this game. Um, I really dig how, like, uh, there's all those cool things, like, you know, um, when you when you have, when you're placing your, your, uh, your, your, these little squares, you know, your little, uh, your little time chits, if you will, and I said chits, uh, when you put those on the board, and, and you're, you're kind of relying on, like, uh, you're relying on the other pe people to, you know, help you out, because, like, you know, over here, you know, on, on the consulting firm on the side, I, I showed that to you, but on the consulting firm, you're relying on hoping, you know, somebody else is going to say, well, I really want to, you know, get a bunch of information, and I, I like, you know, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to place that on there, you know, and so, and they're backing somebody up, because, you know, you know, but if it doesn't, you know, you have the ability to do it yourself, but you're kind of gambling that somebody's going to have to do that. I, I, I really dig that location on the board. I, I really like the whole marketing bonus, where if you're the suck hole, and, and you uh, aren't doing really well as far as popularity goes, and you get nothing, and that's always fun, as long as it isn't you that's the nothing guy, you know, you can laugh at that guy and say, ha ah, ha, you got nothing. You know, and and it's you know it also I mean I do like the the employment track you know the the, the sliding scale back and forth um, I like the fact that they have taken those economic cards and you ditch half of them so it, it does add a, a little bit of randomness to the game so you can't just count on on certain cards showing up I mean I I, I recently played a few games where it's like and there's eight cards and everybody knows what eight card what eight cards are and so people start remembering with the cards and well I know that card's probably showing up so I, I like that about the game bottom line what it comes down to it's it's a really really solid design and it, it, it's a lot of fun you know and but it wouldn't be pushed over uh, over the top for me and I wouldn't be this excited about the game if it wasn't for a really, really rich theme, and if it didn't have some really, really cool components uh, that, that just make the game fun to watch and fun to play and fun to look at, and if it didn't uh, really bring out um, a real, real harsh competitive streak in me. Uh, and what I mean by that is, is that um, a lot of uh, Euro games and, and the multiplayer solitaire argument comes up a lot. And, and and this game has it to a certain extent when you have your own little garden that you're tending and you're just trying to improve yourself. and But... You know, because of the fact that it's an economic theme and, and you're trying to, like, you know, just squeeze every dollar out of, of your little resource engine and you're also trying to, you know, you can't really purposely uh, uh, affect people in many ways. But there's just enough uh, of, of player interaction and, and also there's it just because of the money theme and stuff like that, it brings out that competitive edge in me and um, it makes me want to win. And um, I recently said in one of our podcasts is like, uh, you know, it's like, I don't care if I win. Yeah, you know, And normally I don't, normally I don't. But when a game like this actually makes me go, I wish I'd won that game, then you know what? Uh, I know I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying myself. So, um, so be on the lookout uh, for Ground Floor and get your get your uh, donation in and your, your investment, if you will. Uh, if you happen to watch this video prior to the Kickstarter closing, and I would highly, I'm a backer, so I, I'll be getting a copy, and I would highly suggest you do as well, and hopefully we can get up to that stretch goal, and we can get a second game for free as well. Um, other than that, if you have any questions or comments, uh, by all means, uh, leave those down below, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, all uh, rules and mistakes gladly and cheerfully accepted, so you're not going to hurt my feelings if you think I screwed something up. But, um, all right, well, well thank you uh, for your time, as always. I, I know I kind of ramble on, and these things do go on a bit, and so every time that somebody does take the time to watch these, I, I do realize that, hey, time's finite, and you're taking time out of your life to watch this that I do. So I'd greatly appreciate that. Until next time, uh, this is Undead Viking, and I will talk to you when I do another one of these. All right? Take care.